Hi, hello students. In this video, we are going to be discuss about paraxial rays, marginal rays, as well as paraxial approximation technique. So, before going to be watch my video, please subscribe my channel Wow Academy for Physics and share to your friends. So, children, what are paraxial rays? Paraxial rays are nothing but the rays which are nearer to the principal axis are called paraxial rays. So the ray which is traveling very nearer to the principal axis, such kind of rays are called paraxial rays. Coming to the marginal rays, it is the opposite of paraxial ray. Means it is very simple. What is it? The ray which is traveling far away from the principal axis, such kind of rays are called paraxial, sorry, marginal rays. Margin, where will you draw the margin at the corner? If at all you consider center, center of the page as the pole, margin, we will draw at extreme position of the page. So you should remember like this also children, marginal ray is nothing but it is far away from the pole or far away from the principal axis. Anyhow, pole is lies on the principal axis only. Is it clear children? So the marginal ray is nothing but the ray which is traveling far away from the principal axis. That ray is called marginal ray. So what is the thing which we are going to be do by applying the paraxial approximation technique? That thing we are going to be learn in this video. So after the application after telling the paraxial approximation technique i will define the paraxial approximation technique so in order to explain the paraxial approximation technique I had taken a concave mirror whose whose pole is pole whose pole is p and this will be the principal axis principal axis now initially i had taken the paraxial ray that is which is far away from the principal axis so this will be sorry this will be acting like the marginal ray marginal ray now i am going to be transpose this marginal ray as the paraxial ray means i am going to be transpose this marginal ray as a paraxial ray so you should take see you should in another diagram I'm going to be explain that so so whatever the marginal ray I had taken that marginal ray I will take that as the paraxial ray so it is very nearer to the principal axis this is principal axis now try to draw the normal at this point of incidence let us consider the point is x now this will be the normal which is passing through the center of curvature this will be the normal and what will you get how will you get the reflected ray that ray will be passes through focus anyhow which this thing we are going to be learn the explanation of rules for drawing ray diagrams so this will be the angle of incidence and this will be the angle of reflection anyhow i is equal to r that is the clear thing now i am going to be draw a perpendicular line on the principal axis from the point x the point of intersection of the perpendicular line on the principal axis i had taken as p dash now the same thing which i am going to be observed here so for this situation if now you have drawn the normal here the normal is nothing but the principal axis only at this condition the angle of incidence will become zero even the angle of reflection also will become zero only why because the angle of incidence will be equal to angle of reflection so whenever you transpose the marginal ray as the paraxial ray what is the thing is going to be happen the angle of incidence will become zero now let us take the trigonometric angles let us take the trigonometric angle. So the trigonometric angles I am going to be take as sin theta and cos theta as well as tan theta. Now whatever the angle of incidence theta whenever you transpose the marginal ray into the paraxial ray the angle of incidence will become zero. So during the transposition you get the angle of incidence i will be is equal to zero or approximately equal to zero you can consider 
now i am going to be substitute the theta value in this trigonometric angle so what the thing is going to be get in place of theta you need to substitute zero then you will get sin zero or even you can take this this as approximation why because here i didn't take the exact one so sin theta is approximately equal to zero what is the sin theta value it will be approximately equal to zero sin zero value is zero so whatever the sin zero you have taken that is the answer whenever you're substituting the theta value as zero you are getting the same thing so if theta is equal to zero then sin theta also will be equal to zero that implies sin theta whatever the theta value you substituted that is the answer you are getting so if theta equal to zero then you are getting the theta for smaller angles not bigger angle for smaller angles in the similar way i am substituting the theta value in cos theta then the theta value is very nearer to zero so you will get cos zero you will get as one anyhow in the similar way tan is the expression of sin theta divided by cos theta then what will you get here ma? then you will get tan theta what is the theta value zero sin zero divided by cos zero anyhow you will get sin zero is zero and cos zero is one anyhow you are going to be get zero only but what is the theta value you substituted zero the same thing you got here so therefore cos theta will be approximately equal to 1 and therefore and tan theta will be approximately equal to theta this is the thing which you are going to be get see for suppose i substituted tan 2 theta now i am applying the tan 2 theta for the paraxial approximation technique so whatever the angle you substituted in tan function those angle you are going to be get not it is the not value of theta it is the value of 2 theta so you should get the answer as 2 theta so whatever the theta value you are substituting that is the answer for the approximation technique clear see for suppose i am going to be take tan m where m is the angle then you will get tan m only here tan m is approximately equal to m so coming to the paraxial approximation technique so whatever the value you substituted theta equal to 0 nothing but the angle of incidence equal to 0 you are getting the 0 only that's why I consider it as sin theta is approximately equal to theta cos theta here you will get the different conditions so cos theta is approximately equal to 1 and in the same time tan theta will be approximately equal to theta and tan 2 theta will be approximately equal to 2 theta so during the paraxial approximation technique we transpose the marginal ray as the paraxial ray clear as a result we will get sin theta is approximately equal to theta cos theta is approximately equal to 1 and tan theta is approximately equal to theta this technique is called paraxial approximation technique now my question is why we consider this paraxial ray as the marginal ray is it clear children why we transpose the marginal ray as a paraxial ray will you think that answer so if at all you think the answer is since the aperture of the spherical surfaces is very very less is it clear children the aperture of the spherical surface is very less the reflecting portion of the spherical mirror we are considering as the aperture so the aperture the whatever the reflecting portion is there that portion is very less so that's why whatever the marginal ray had taken that you should transpose it as the paraxial ray due to the less aperture of the spherical mirror is it clear children because of the less aperture of the spherical mirror we are considering as marginal rays as the paraxial ray is it clear children thank you for watching my video